Thank you, thank you. Hello and welcome to the 2023-24 UEFA Europa League draw. We are super excited to be back here in Monaco for this one. And joining us today in the Grimaldi Forum are representatives from the clubs that have qualified for this season's competition. That is absolutely right, Alex. And in just a few moments, they will discover who their teams will be playing in this year's group stage. But before that, let's take a look back at what happened in last season's UEFA Europa League and remind ourselves how Sevilla secured their seventh Europa League title. That's four more than any other side in history. Those European knights are back. A real sense of anticipation here. It is packed to the rafters. So we're almost ready to go. The road to Budapest is strewn with sizable obstacles. The noise is raucous. A quite remarkable achievement from Sevilla, who are now by far the most decorated UEFA Europa League side of all time. Huge congratulations to their players, their coaching staff, and of course to the fans. OK, now there are 32 teams dreaming of following in Sevilla's footsteps and winning this season's UEFA Europa League. But before they discover who they're going to be facing in the group stage, it's time to honour two players who really excelled in last year's competition. Jesus Navas has been named the UEFA Europa League Player of the Season after a fantastic campaign for Sevilla. Navas played a pivotal role in the final, helping to create his side's equalising goal, as you've just seen. And the 37-year-old picked up three assists 
during the course of the competition. Yes, and by Leverkusen's uh, Florian Wirtz has been named the winner of the UEFA Europa League Young Player of the Season. A 20-year-old scored three goals and registered two assists as his side made it all the way to the semi-finals, just narrowly losing to Roma over the two legs. So a huge congratulations to both players and the best of luck for the new season. OK, time to introduce our first special guest who will be helping with today's draw. He is a two-time Europa League winner who excelled in the heart of the midfield for Syria, as well as captaining his national team with distinction. And when it came to key moments, he knew where the back of the net was. for Europa League trophy onto stage. Please give a warm welcome to Stefan Umbia. <laughs> oh, the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well done, my friend. Well done. Have a, a position next to that big trophy. You know it well. Yeah. You know it well. You had two finals, scored in one, I think, from a penalty shootout, played in the other. Yeah. Um, good memories? Yeah, great, great memory. Uh, team memory. And uh, great competition as well. Mm. And, you know, and after the game, after the final game, yeah, it's so, so important to realize what you did mm. and, and, the, and the, the end of the season. It's unbelievable. We're seeing some of the special moments just behind there, Stefan. You won it both times under the management of Unai Emery, yeah. who's actually won the competitions four times. Yeah. Tell us a bit about him and his qualities as a coach. Oh, uh, the manager of Unai, it's, uh, he likes the detail, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember the first time I won a little when I was, uh, uh, have my uh, teammate, he was a little bit late, I don't know how to say the name, yeah. and uh, he stopped the training. <laughs> And he said, you must respect the people and respect the people who save the, the, the training uh, uh, pitch. And uh, everybody was shocked. And we, we realized at the end of the season, we win the, the trophy. Everybody was happy as well. Yeah. Speaking of teammates, um, today would have been Jose Antonio Reyes's 40th birthday. So I think it's only right that we all pay our respects to your former captain and and yeah. teammate, but it's part, all of that history, the seven titles, it's part of what makes Sevilla a special club. Jose, Jose was, uh, was a leader and uh, shared the same dressing room with him was unbelievable because he was humble and he was crazy as well because he was close, he was close to the only young player because I was young when I was there and uh, yeah, great moment and I just want to say hello to his family and mm. you know, it's a little bit difficult to, to lose him. Well said. Yeah. Well said. Well, just hang on for just one moment there, because now this season's UEFA Europa League final is going to be held in the Dublin Arena in Ireland. And our next special guest is something of a legend in his home country. He won 118 caps for Ireland. He's currently their assistant manager. And at club level, he enjoyed incredible success with Manchester United, winning five Premier League titles and a UEFA Champions League. Please welcome to the stage the UEFA Europa League final ambassador, John O'Shea.
going to likely see how you've matched the colour of your tie there yeah, when we're talking about bring, Ireland. bring a bit of green in. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, the final is going to be played in the National Stadium in Ireland. You've played there plenty of times before. Please do tell us, what is it like? Very unique. Um, it'll be almost 50,000 screaming fans packed into Dublin. Um, as I said, it's, it's an amazing stadium and the one that the whole of Europe will, I'm sure, be desperate to get to the final because it'll be a special occasion. I wanted to ask about uh, a young player who's already making waves. You know him well. He's already playing for you, uh, the national team, Evan Ferguson. He'll obviously now be on the European stage with Brighton for the first time. Talent? Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying to play him down a yeah. bit more now because obviously he he's came to everyone's attention the last season in the Premier League for Brighton and obviously now on the European stage with Brighton as well. Mm. So it's going to be extra special to see him, but hopefully... Um, I'm just worried about him staying fit this weekend, and he's okay for the Irish team next week, mainly. But <laughs> no, very special talent. Fingers crossed. He is definitely one to keep an eye on. Actually, not that I'm trying to rub it in or remind you, but last year's winners, Sevilla, obviously mm. knocked out your old team, Manchester <laughs> United, there. But both are in the Champions League this time around. So, yeah. actually, who do you think will be walking out the 22nd of May in that stadium? Who have you got your eye wow. on? Who are you thinking? Um, well, a team probably just down the road from Manchester, I think, will be. Definitely hot favourites. I think mm. Liverpool will be, will be in the mix, I think. It's uh, hard for you to say that, John, isn't it? Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> he took his time. It's like, oh. I wanted to add a bit more pressure onto them. But, no, I think they have to be, have to be one of the favourites. Mm. Um, I think Brighton will definitely, be, definitely surprise a few teams. OK, well, Stefan and John, thank you for helping us with today's draw. Please do take your positions at the draw table. Oh. OK, the wait is nearly over. It is pretty much time to begin the draw for the UEFA Europa League group stage. So please welcome UEFA Deputy General Secretary Giorgio Marchetti and Tobias Hedstuck, UEFA Head of Club Competitions. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of UEFA, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to Monaco for the 2023-2024 UEFA Europa League group stage draw. The UEFA Europa League takes today another step towards creating new stories, new memories and new legends that will sit alongside the many that we have been gifted in the past. Some have already begun these new stories, as among the 32 teams representing 21 different countries in this draw, six will be making their UEFA club competition group stage debuts. Such a diverse mix will give teams a chance to test themselves against new and unfamiliar styles, giving us fans a chance to enjoy some of the most thrilling and skilled football in the world. The ultimate goal, of course, uh, which so many dream of, uh, yet so few have realized, is to stand in the confetti with the iconic Europa League trophy raised high above their head, as Diego Maradona did in 1989, or Gianluigi Buffon in 1999, or like Sevilla did just a few months ago for a stunning seventh time. Appointment at the Dublin Arena in beautiful Dublin on 22nd of May 2024. We wish you all the very best of luck this season and we look forward to seeing you in action. And uh, before we are ready to begin the draw, let's take a short moment to review the technical procedure. The 32 teams have been allocated to four pots in accordance with the following principles. Pot 1 will comprise the UEFA Europa Conference League title holder, West Ham United FC, and the top seven clubs in the club coefficient rankings. Pot 2, the following eight clubs in the rankings, and so on for pots 3 and 4. Clubs from the same country cannot be drawn in the same group. For TV coverage reasons, every two clubs from the same association are paired in order to split their kickoff times, that is, one early and one late. For this reason, the eight groups will be distinguished by colours. Groups A to D will be red and groups E to H will be blue. When a paired club is drawn, for example, into a red group A to D, the other paired club, once it has been drawn, will automatically be assigned to one of the four blue groups, E to H. 
In addition, pairing principles will also be applied between the UEFA Europa League and the UEFA Europa Conference League. Therefore, in the case of associations with one representative in the UEL group stage and one representative in the UECL group stage, these clubs will likewise be paired so that their matches kick off at different times. In the case of associations with three clubs in the same competition and one in the other competition, the unpaired club will be paired with the club from the other competition. The teams of pot one will be drawn first. A ball is drawn at random and open to display the name. The team drawn is placed in the first available group in alphabetical order from A to H, as indicated by the computer. For example, if the team drawn has all eight options from A to H available, it will be automatically allocated to Group A. In a similar way, if the team drawn has only six options available from C to H, it will be automatically allocated to Group C, and so on. It must be noted that the number of options available to a team depends not only on the team's own attributes and those of the teams already drawn, but also the attributes of the other teams still to be drawn. This is due to the computer calculations needed to anticipate all possible scenarios and to prevent any deadlock situation. This procedure will allocate all teams of pot one to the various groups. It will then be repeated for the teams in pots two, three and four in that order. At the end of the draw, a computer will assign the final positions of the teams within each group. These positions will determine the order of the home and away matches, as well as defining which matches are played with an early or late kickoff. In this respect, the computer will ensure that stadium and city clashes are taken into account. The match calendar will be released on Saturday morning at the latest. I'm so glad. We've cleared all that up. So, time to find out who will be facing whom in this season's UEFA Europa League group stage. 32 teams about to discover their fate, and pot one represents the top seeded teams, which this season include three time winners, Liverpool, as John has rightly pointed out, last season's beaten finalists, Jose Mourinho's AS Roma, and the 2021 winners, Villarreal. So, Giorgio, let's go. Thank you, Matt. Stefan, you are such a strong wall in midfield, very difficult for the opponents to pass you, but today we ask you to be more creative, more offensive, and help us uh, create uh, this 23-24 uh, UEFA Europa League group stage. West Ham United. So, first team drawn is uh, West Ham United, uh, which will, of course, be allocated to Group A. Thank you, Stefan. Semi-finalists of 2022, West Ham United. Group A for them. And, of course, the winners of the UEFA Europa Conference League just a few months ago. And uh, let's see which second team is now being drawn to top another group. Ajax. And now another team with a long tradition in Europe, AFC Ajax Amsterdam. <laughs> Group B for the winners of the 1992 edition. They have participated 12 times in uh, the UEFA Europa League uh, group stage, more than any other club in Europe. Rangers. And uh, now it's uh, Rangers from Glasgow, finalists in 2022. Group uh, C is the group of uh, Rangers uh, FC. Please, uh, Stefan, after the first three groups, we are ready to see another top seed to be drawn for the next group. Liverpool. And now Liverpool FC, when you talk about tradition, of course, uh, nobody, nobody can doubt about the tradition of Liverpool, which takes position in Group uh, E. The Reds, three-time winners, the record winners of this specific title in England. Liverpool in Group E. Villarreal. And now the famous yellow submarine of Villarreal 
Group F for Villarreal, the winners of uh, the trophy in 2021, and the team which has the record of matches won in this competition, 49, and goals scored, 152. Atalanta. Now from Bergamo, the Nerazzurri Bergamaschi. Group D is the group of Atalanta, quarter finalists twice, last time in 2022. And we have another two teams to allocate. AS Roma. We start with another Italian team, AS Roma. Group G is the group of AS Roma, twice finalists of the, uh, this competition, 91 and this year, 2023. Fourth time in the last five seasons in the Europa League group stage. Bayern Leverkusen. And uh, we end up with the semi-finalists of the last season, Bayern Leverkusen Group H which means that uh, we have uh, concluded uh, our job for top four group and pot Thank one. you, Giorgio. Thank you, Stefan. You can take a breath now and take a moment. <laughs> so the first eight teams have been assigned their group, and now it's time to find out who will be joining them. Let's move on to pot two, which actually includes Sporting, Slavia Prague, and the 1993 Champions League winners, Marseille. Toby, OK, it's over to you. Thank you, and we start directly, I would say. We will shuffle and then let's see who will be the first opponents of the team just won and who will give us then the first indication where the Europa League season will go to. Okay. Olympiakos. Olympiakos FC joining Group A six times reaching the round of 16 and therefore in Group A joining West Ham United. So that's a good start, please. Yeah. Olympic de Marseille. Olympic de Marseille from France going into Group B. Three times reaching the final in 99, 2004, and 2018. So they joining in Group B with Ajax. And another good start of the first two groups. So let's keep on. Real Betis. Real Betis Palompier from Spain, reaching as well six times the round of 16. They going directly into Group C. There with Rangers FC from Scotland. So we have already the first three groups. Let's keep on. Sporting Club de Portugal. Sporting Club de Portugal finalist from 2005 going into Group D and therefore joining Atalanta FC from Italy. They are, have 36 participation in the UEL or UEFA Cup, more than any other club. So now we are as well halfway through. Let's see. Lask. Lask from Austria, reaching the round of 16 in 2020, and they will join Liverpool in uh, Group E. So yeah, their third UEL group stage appearance, and in their third one, they directly go with Liverpool. Stad Ren. Stad René from France, reaching the round of 16 in 2019. They go into Group F, where they will be with Villarreal, also a former title holder. And for them, it is the second successive UEL group stage appearance. So two more to go to have the pot two. Uh, 
SK Slavia Praha. SK Slavia Praha from Czechia, reaching the semi final in 1996. They will go to Group G together with the finalist of last year, Ice Roma. So now one more. Hopefully. Yes, we know who. <laughs> Should know where they go. So let's see the confirmation. Karabakh. Karabakh FK from Azerbaijan already their eighth appearance in the UEFA Europa League group stage and obviously they will go to Group H where they will join Bayern 04 Leverkusen for two finished. So back to you. Toby, John, thank you very much. So eight more teams have been drawn. I've got to say there are some mm -hmm. intriguing matches already. Look at that in Group B, Ajax against Marseille. And actually, if you go to D, Atalanta taking on Sporting Man. Mm, shaping up nicely. So let's move on to pot three, which includes last season's quarter finalists, the Belgians Union saint gilloise And of course, as we've discussed already, Brighton and Hove Albion making their European debut. So, Giorgio and Stefan, back to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ready to go ahead uh, with the help of uh, Stefan. And to see more, to know more about these groups that are waiting for uh, all fans to cheer in this new exciting season. Fribourg. SC Freiburg. From Germany, Group A is the group of Freiburg uh, together with uh, West Ham United and with uh, Olympiakos. Yes, Freiburg round of 16 uh, last season their second uh, successive appearance. Therefore, last year they won the group without losing any match. Brighton. And now it's Brighton. Brighton uh, goes uh, to uh, face Ajax and uh, Olympique de Marseille in a very strong group, I would say. Uh, group B, their debut First time, first season in a UEFA competition group stage for Brighton. Sparta Praha. Sparta Praha is the next club drawn, and Sparta can join Group C, where they find Rangers and Real Betis. The best results of Sparta Praha were quarterfinals, twice, 84 and 2016. Nine times in uh, the Europa League group stage, more than any other Czech club. Union saint gilloise Union saint gilloise uh, from Belgium. Uh, group E is the group of Union saint gilloise uh, Liverpool and Lask are the other two teams thrown so far. They made the quarterfinals last year in their first season in the uh, UEFA competition, winning the group. Maccabi Haifa. Now from Israel, Maccabi. Maccabi Haifa goes uh, into Group F. Maccabi together with uh, Villarreal and uh, Stade Rene. Three groups still to be completed. And here is where we go. Sterngrass. Sturm Graz from Austria. Group D is the group of uh, Sturm Graz with Atalanta and uh, Sporting Clube. Sturm Graz, quarter finalist in 1884. Sheriff Tridaspol. Now the champions of Moldova, Sheriff Tiraspol, Group G, is the group of Sheriff, uh, together with uh, Roma and uh, Slavia Pra. They, uh, they are at the sixth uh, consecutive uh, or sixth appearance in the UEFA Europa League group stage, where they reached the knockout playoff in 2022. Molde. And to finish, uh, that's uh, Molde FK from the north. From Norway, Molde joins Group H together with Bayer Leverkusen and Karabag. Thank you, George and Stefan. So the group stage really starting to come together now, picking through one or two. Um, certainly Rangers in Group C with 
potential trips for those Glasgow Rangers fans to Seville and to Prague in the autumn. And of course, the reverse would also be true. Um, and from Atalanta and Sporting, now Sturm Graz joining them in Group D, while uh, Maccabi Haifa join Rene and Villarreal in Group F. It's definitely taking shape. It sure is, but there are still eight more teams who are waiting to find out who they're going to be facing in this year's competition. Pot four includes current Greek champions, Ike, Swiss side, Servet, and Euro League, Europa League debutants, actually, TSC from Serbia. So actually, let's not keep them waiting any longer. Toby, for the last time, it's over to you. Thank you, yes, and we start directly a little shuffle before we can see the pot four teams to close the different groups. So let's see which team will help us to close the first group of the UEL. FK TSC Baka Topola. FK TSC Baka Topola from Serbia. They will go into Group A and it's their first appearance in the UEL group stage, as just mentioned. So, yes, that's a good start. Group A, therefore, finished with West Ham, Olympiakos, Freiburg and Batschka Topola. AEK Athens. AEK Athens, the black and yellow team and champion from Greece, semi-finalist in 1977. They will join uh, Group B, where they are together with AFC Ajax, Marseille and Brighton. So, another good group closed. Let's keep on. Aris Limassol. Aris Limassol FC, the champion from Cyprus. Also their debut in the UEFA Europa League group stage. They will join a Group C. And in Group C, they're foreclosed with Rangers, Real Betis and AC Sparta Praha. Let's keep on. Five more. Vraku. Vraku Szechtochkova from Poland as, as well. Their UEL <laughs> group stage debut. And they will uh, join a Group D. In Group D, they will be with Atalanta, with Sporting Club and Sturm Graz. So halfway through, we have nearly all the groups. Now, let's see. The next team. Toulouse FC. Toulouse FC from France, a cup winner from France. They will join in Group E. They, last time they played the group stage was in 2009-10 and as well in 2007-8. To that time, still the UEFA Cup. Panathinaikos FC. Panathinaikos FC, another team from Greece, quarter finalist in 1988 and 2003. They will go into Group F, and in Group F they will be together with Villarreal, Stade René, and Maccabi Haifa. So two more. Servet FC. Servet FC from Switzerland. They will join in Group G. They played the uh, round of 16 of the UEFA Cup in 1982 and 93, and as well in 2001, 2002. And as said, they joined Group G with Roma, Slavia Praha, and Sheriff Tiraspol. And now. Hopefully, the conquerors of Aberdeen. BK Haken. And last, the champion from Sweden, BK Hecken, obviously joining Group H, their group stage first season debut in the UEL, together with Leverkusen, Karabakh, Molde. And that closes all the groups.
So it, it can start. Back it, to you. <laughs> thank you. So there we have it. The draw for the UEFA Europa League group stage is complete. And there are some brilliant games to look forward to. Matt, shall you give everyone a recap? I'll try. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> David Moyes, the West Ham manager, is, I think, preparing for a Premier League game tonight. Uh, we'll already have staff, I'm sure, looking at all those trips to Greece, to Germany, and indeed to, to Serbia in Group B. Uh, you can see Ajax and Marseille, we already know about, and Brighton and Ike Athens. That is, uh, that is a powerful quartet uh, there. Rangers, we've talked about, might need some of those um, bottles of sun cream, the Glaswegians, for trips to Seville and Cyprus in the autumn, with Real Betis, uh, Sparta Prague, and Limassol, Aris Limassol in that group. Uh, Atalanta and Sporting are two well-known European teams these days, but Sturm Graz uh, and Rakoff, the debutants, make up an interesting Group D. Liverpool. We'll be thinking about Lask from Austria, Union saint gilloise who've certainly taken down some big names in the last couple of years, and Toulouse in the southwest of France, Villarreal, Stade René, Maccabi Haifa from Israel, and Panathinaikos is an interesting Group F. Uh, Jose Mourinho will be looking at Slavia, Prague, Sheriff Tiraspol, and Servette uh, of Switzerland, and Leverkusen, the top seed in Group H with Karabag, and then a Norwegian and a Swedish team in Molde, and debutants BK Hecken, who knocked out Aberdeen. Last night. Yes, all matchups we are looking forward to. A huge thank you to our special guests this afternoon, Stefan Umbia and, of course, John O'Shea, and to Giorgio and Toby. Thank you for joining us. And that brings today's draw to a close. It does. The UEFA Europa League group stage kicks off on the 21st of September. Best of luck to all 32 clubs taking part in this year's competition. Yes, and from Matt and myself and to everyone here in Monaco, thank you for joining us and it's goodbye for now. Thank you.